This is Don Drysdale. I've played a lot of baseball in my day, and it's a great game, and I loved every minute of it. I can tell you from experience that it's tough being a pitcher, and not so many candidates make it to the top, but the good ones do, and today you'll hear about a fabulous pitcher who never won a big league game until he was 31 years old. Welcome to the Daily Rewind, brought to you by ThisDayInBaseball.com. My name is Tom Hannon, and I'm your host. On the Daily Rewind, we like to let the players tell the story in their own words. And on today's show, we are excited to talk to you about Dazzy Vance. And we're going to have Double D, Don Drysdale, tell you all about Vance in his unlikely career. What makes today special is on February 12th, 1924, the National League awarded its very first Most Valuable Player Award. The National League had previously awarded a Chalmers Award from 1911 to 1914. Chalmers was an automobile manufacturer. He was using his sponsorship of the award to promote his vehicle sales. Apparently, it was not effective and they discontinued it after 1914, with Johnny Evers winning the very last award. And in 1922, the American League created the MVP award to honor, I quote, the baseball player who is of the greatest all-around service to his club. The award was voted on by a committee of baseball writers, with George Sisler taking home the award in 1922 then Babe Ruth won his only Most Valuable Player Award in 1923. Now, Ruth is a story for another day, as they didn't really allow more than one MVP until 1928. So he only won one MVP award throughout his career, which is uh, quite astonishing when you think about it. And on this date, in 1924, the National League followed with the Most Valuable Player Award. And I'm going to let Don Drysdale take it from here and tell you about the 1924 National League MVP Award winner, Dazzy Vance, in his most unlikely career. This is Don Drysdale. I've played a lot of baseball in my day, and it's a great game, and I loved every minute of it. I can tell you from experience that it's tough being a pitcher, and not so many candidates make it to the top, but the good ones do, and today you'll hear about a fabulous pitcher who never won a big league game until he was 31 years old. This program is brought to you as a public service of the station on behalf of your local Army representative. Today's Army will teach you career skills that you can profit from for a lifetime. Now today's story. It's about a great pitcher for the Brooklyn Dodgers named Dazzy Vance. This man's story should be an inspiration to every young athlete, no matter what sport they're in. It's proof that if you're patient and believe in yourself, well, you can make it. Dazzy got into professional baseball in 1915. He pitched in nine games for the New York Yankees, but never won a game. The following year, he was sent to the minors, and he stayed there for five wacky years. His arm hurt, and he never knew why, although he suspected that he might have injured it while boxing with his brother at their home in Red Cloud, Nebraska. Anyway, his arm hurt. But he was married, and he had a family to support, so he decided to stay in baseball. While he was pitching in Columbus, Ohio, he found that soaking his arm in a bucket of ice water between innings made him feel better. But after a few weeks, even that didn't help. So he went to the doctor. The doc told him, I don't know what you've done to hurt yourself, but if you can keep it well for the next four or five years, well, you should be okay. Well, that's a long time for a pitcher to wait around for his arm to heal up. And if Vance knew any other way to make a living, he probably would have left baseball. Instead, he stayed. In 1917, he started the season in Toledo, Ohio, but he couldn't get the ball over the plate. The next thing he knew, he was in Memphis. His fastball was good, but by the third inning, he was so tired that they'd pull him out of the game. He stayed in Memphis for another season, but it was obvious that he wasn't going anywhere. So he was traded to New Orleans, and all of a sudden, he got better. His former teammates couldn't believe it was the same man when he whipped them only two weeks after being traded. But Dazzy Vance was only beginning his winning ways. And I'll tell you about this man's amazing success story in just a moment. First, here's some equally interesting news from today's Army. It takes more than one person to make a winner. When I was pitching baseball, I knew there were a lot of people on and off the field backing me up. Well, it's the same in the combat arms of today's Army. 
armor, infantry, artillery, tough young men working together overcoming a challenge to accomplish the mission. Go with the first team and join the people who've joined the Army. Now back to our story. Dazzy Vance had been in the minor leagues for five years. His arm hurt almost all the time, and he was a mediocre pitcher who tired fast and who had little consistency. But in 1920, he was traded to New Orleans, and overnight he began to pitch like a champion. In 1921, he won 21 games, and the Dodgers picked him up, although it wasn't what they originally had in mind. What they wanted was a catcher, but their scout was so impressed with Vance's fastball that they gambled and brought him up too. When he finally got to Brooklyn, he was 31 years old. Although his age was a secret, his sore arm was a baseball legend. He had drifted through 12 different teams in 12 different towns, but the Dodgers took a chance and bought him anyway. In his first year, he won 18 games and led the league in strikeouts. In his second year, he did the same thing, 18 wins, and he led the league in strikeouts. In his third year, he won 28 games, led the league in strikeouts, and was voted the most valuable player. He led the league in strikeouts seven times, and that's something that no other pitcher has ever done. When he retired, he had won 197 games and struck out 2,045 batters, and he pitched until he was 44 years old. Twenty years later, he was voted into Baseball's Hall of Fame. And I say that's not bad for a guy that had a sore arm for five years and never won a game until he was 31 years old. This is Don Drysdale. You can be a winner at a much earlier age if you'll see your local Army recruiter soon. He's looking for young men and women who are interested in learning a career with a future. See him soon and join the people who've joined the Army. Till next time, so long, everyone. All right. I hope you enjoyed the bullpen session from Don Drysdale. And I left those commercials in there because they were just uh, it just made you feel like you were way back in the t in the day listening to him uh, deliver that message, and he was just amazing. Uh, but could you imagine being Dazzy Vance and you're 0 and 8, and you're 31 years old, and you win your first game, and then you turn into the very first National League MVP? And then you turn into a Hall of Famer. It's such an unlikely career, and it's, a, and it's just a fantastic story. Now, just a little bit more about 1924, because Drysdale didn't give you all the details, because uh, there's some interesting pieces about it. Vance won the Triple Crown of pitching in 1924. He had 28 wins, 262 strikeouts, and his ERA was 216. He set the then National League record for strikeouts in a nine-inning game when he fanned 15 Chicago Cubs on August 23, 1924. On September 24, 1924, Vance completed an immaculate inning, striking out three batters on nine pitches in the second inning of a 6-5 win over the Cubs. Vance became just the fifth National League pitcher and the seventh in Major League Baseball history to, to accomplish the feat. Now, to give you some perspective on his 262 strikeouts in 1924, they were more than any two National League pitches combined. Burley Grimes was second with 135, and Dolph LeCue was third with 86 strikeouts. And of course, Advance will be inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1955. And he accompanied some pretty good company with Joe DiMaggio. So that's a heck of a career. And you can find this clip on the YouTube. Check out the channel, A Room with a View, and then look for Don Drysdale Bullpens. That channel has thousands of clips on old-time old radio, and it's really worth checking out. Don Drysdale's Bullpens, by the way, have many other stories. Uh, this was really the only baseball one, interestingly enough. But there's... Uh, a dozen other stories just like this that are uh, worth uh, checking out. And if you enjoyed listening about Dazzy Vance, you can find out much more about Dazzy on thisdayinbaseball.com. Just go to thisdayinbaseball.com, put in Dazzy Vance in the search bar, and you're going to be amazed at the amount of content you can have. And I'm going to ask you for two things. If you enjoy the show, you enjoy the content, please tell a friend about the show. It's the only way podcasts really grows is when you tell a friend about the show. If you can share it, and of course, please subscribe. This way you know when we put out new content, it's going to show up right in your feed, and you're going to be able to see our shows. 
Secondly, you can help us by sponsoring a page on This Day in Baseball. You could sponsor Don Drysdale's page, Brooklyn Dodgers, Dazzy Vance, or any of the other hundreds of thousand pages on thisdayinbaseball.com. You should check it out on thisdayinbaseball.com slash page sponsor. And that's it for today's show. And until next time, I hope to see you at the ballpark. Peace.